What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo. Today, we are doing a player for the top 20 players of 2021. Who is that player going to be? Can you take a guess? Let me see. Drop it in the comments. I like to eat Guy B. Okay, it is number now, number 15 on this list. We just did the last one. Do I spoil it? Are you watching this one before watching the last one? Jesus Christ, Jame. We did Jame. We did Jame. We did Jame. We did Jame. It was good. It was a great demo. Now, another player who is a player that is... Okay, how do I put it? I'm going to put it like this. He's the only player from his team that will be on this list. It's kind of a mess, messed up spoiler for me to do, but I think we're at 50. I'm willing to take some, do something like that. He is a player who is one of the most talented hybrids in the game. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. Hybrid meaning rifle and op. This player is the only player to have not fallen off on land for his roster. You guessed it. Stown, baby. 2.6 cents, 400 DPI. The Danish shocks, as I'll call them as we watch this demo. 19 years old and has three years of professional professional playtime. I actually don't even know. Stown is a guy we're going to be talking about more and more. Uh, his first land, this his first major this year, and he killed it. This year, overall statistic statistics-wise, his team had a lot of struggles. All right, his team had a lot of struggles, and I think they did do a good job of quashing some of the le like onliner, you know, uh, kind of, uh, kind of the uh, kind of the onliner. Uh, 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 what the fuck are you trying to say? What's the word I'm looking for? Like the um, the stigma. They had the onliner stigma, right? And we're here. We're just looking at Stowns, by the way. Stowns' land stats were actually spectacular, but he was the only guy to do this. He was the only guy to do this. He was the guy who was not who his 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 rating basically did not change in the last twelve months, uh, going from online to any of his lands. Okay, barely changed. Everyone else was like a ten to fifteen point drop off almost. It was it was pretty pretty severe and without Stown, i think that they're they're just nothing so he he wasn't at the world final because something happened um in his personal life he took the time off so you know i hope he's okay that was a really big event to miss you know with a lot of money on the line so i'm sure it was quite serious but yeah i hope he's all right but i think this year his first year with uh, a significant number of lands a first year where he's played a major i think he had such an incredible year he was clearly the best player on the team he impressed a lot of people, and I think um, what can you say? What can you say? Stown stocks are through the roof. Stown stocks are through the roof. Um, the only problem for me was thinking that can I put them higher? But yeah, lots of great performances this year. Um, lots of lots of uh, lots of great performances this year from a lot of people. And uh, I think if it's actually if his team was a little bit better, we could have seen even more amazing things out of Stown. Uh, but overall. What can you say? He still did great. He still did great. Um, this demo will be a nuke demo on T side where he had a, a fantastic T side, 17 and seven on the T side versus Copenhagen flames in the challenger stage of the major. And we're going to watch it. And I will say there are some, there's some sick stuff. There's some sick rounds in this one. I really like this demo a lot. I actually pre-screened the first couple rounds and I was like, whoa, this is cool. So I just actually stopped and then I said, I'm just going to record, but yeah, lots of great mid rounds, really solid entries, lots of versatility. And I'm, you know, I'm saying this guy might be one of the most versatile players in the game at the moment. So hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and, and, uh, stick around for the, the demo review and that's it. Let's hop right in. Here we are to watch down on LAN and, uh, match versus the Copenhagen flames in the challenger stage. Why are we watching this game? Because it's high pressure, it's the major, it's the event of the year. It's the event that we should use as a measuring stick for I think how good play players are. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. But you picked Rez, how could you pick Rez? That's actually kind of fair, but I did want to respect that there were other hard lands within the year that he also played in and played well, even if the major didn't go too hot. But uh, Stown is, the, one of the most interesting players on this list for me because number one uh 
Just love to watch him play. He's made a brand for himself as one of the best hybrids in the tier one. Also, let's look at this little maneuver. 1024 by 768 is down. Trying to rotate out to see if he can bait any rotation in. And he actually gets it. Look, at he listened and heard Hooksy jump through the window while he kept the player downstairs. This is some beautiful work. But it doesn't stop here. It's down. Let's see what you can do. They open the door on him. What does he do? He jumps through backwards. And Shush has to go for the trade. He can't get it. But Stown doesn't need any help, man. What a sick pistol around to kick things off in this demo. This is why we want to watch Stown. Because he's a very creative player. Very aggressive player. And he thinks... He both thinks creatively and aggressively quickly. All right? So that's what's really cool about him. So... Uh, I was looking at this game and I was thinking... Maybe we should start with stick with the CT side, you know? More kills, less deaths, CT side. That'll be fun. And then I looked at this match and I was like, man, he's got like a very high rating on this match overall. Probably farmed a lot on the CT side. Let me let's watch that. And then I see he had a 17 and 7 T side. I was like, oh, you know me, guys. I get a seven and 17 and 7 T side. I can't turn that down. We're we have to watch that. So here we are watching the 17 and 7 T side versus the Copenhagen Flames in the challenger stage of the major. The story of the demo is that uh, Stown was not a liability at this LAN. And the rest of his team had a lot of trouble playing on uh, playing on LAN. I mean, to be frank, every single player on Heroic fell off pretty heavily at all of their LANs, except for Stown. We look at his online rating was 0 0.02 higher than his land rating over the entire year for all the events they played in. So I think that just, that's why that Stown was number 12 last year on the top 20. And that's why he's very likely to be on the top 20 again, because the, this guy was a huge reason that they were able to make any progress on land. And for whatever reason was the only player who wasn't a liability. Now we look at other team, right? We look at their counterpart. Their CIS counterpart in Gambit, who have this reputation. Look at this mid round. Look at this mid rounding. You know, actually, hold on, let me talk about this for a second. He said that he really liked Cadian a while ago when he joined the team because he said that the Cadian has that bit of aggressive calling style inside of him, right? So that actually Stone really liked that when he came on the team because he likes to call aggressive stuff as well, which led me to believe that he was a really big part of the mid rounds on top of being. An insanely talented hybrid who could probably op on any tier one. Team. Yeah, I think Stown could op. Actually, there are there are hybrid players that'll be like, you got a hybrid. A Stown, I think he could just op if he wanted to. I really I see it in him. But it's easier said than done, you know, to op all, all year round to rather than just op once in a while. No one's watching your demos and so on uh, for that. But a solid ass rifler right here. And yeah, he said he gelled well with Cadian and the um, concept of playing aggressive style CS, pushing a lot. I've heard a lot of teams tell me that both Gambit and and Heroic, funnily enough, two of the most annoying teams to play against because of how, quote-unquote, random they can be with their pushing and everything like that. And to be fair to them, they brought it into LAN as well. Gambit has officially translated better, though, I would say. Um, one thing that's always been a weird one for me to figure out, I can hear the rifle are, oh, wow. Some interesting target selection here. All right, he knows there's a player on the left, but he also read that there could be someone peeking on the right. I don't know if he heard that, but... He didn't freak out at all. But now he'll just be the only person alive on 1 HP. Surely he does nothing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's great. It's great that uh, Kadian has activated this within him. And they, you know, I think Kadian overall has proved that he's a really strong caller. And... Uh, even at the major, even though I am putting, you know, all of their land stats into question, because I was looking through this list and I thought first, I thought Kadian was going to make it last year and I was super sure Kadian would make it this year. And last year he missed it by a hair. This year he didn't really, he wasn't really kind of close for, I think, the level of his team. So for whatever reason, the top 20 players, uh, they are severely underrepresented uh, compared to what I feel like is their reputation in the year. I feel like they have had built themselves a pretty strong reputation in the year, but are pretty underrepresented in the top 20 for the, each of their players. Whereas like Gambit, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but Gambit are doing pretty well this year, right? I think we can all name at least two 
players from Gambit who should who should be in the top 20. I'm trying to be very careful here. We're at top 16. Okay. Um, but yeah, here, here's down. He goes out front sometimes. He gets team wiped sometimes. Man, it is insane to be at home. Uh, it is insane. I am. I, I didn't even recognize my apartment. I did. We play Academy League season two finals. Then I did Red Bull. Red Bull Flikisa Helsinki Invitational in Finland. My first time in Finland. Then I did Blast Fall Finals, the best land of my entire life that I'll probably ever be a part of. And then I did two weeks in Barcelona uh, with my girlfriend on vacation. And then I went to Blast World Finals, the Omicron World Finals with no crowd. And um, back home final. All right, let's see if South can get these trades. Doing just fine. Ooh, he's quick. Wow, you know, versus Jabby Dabby Do, that's not easy because he's going to be able to go up and down the ladder super fast. It's a nice reaction. I actually love the mid rounds. The way that's down plays, he he basically takes out a, a huge chunk of a big rotation quickly if he has an idea for something. That's a, if he does, thinks too slowly, he's going to go down the vent slowly, rotate around slowly, but it's down. He's. He's thinking very, very fluid processing here. All right, defaulting towards squeaky once again. That's what we saw from Ben in his game. Jabby gets his revenge. Jabby's revenge. Let's skip over it. But yeah, Stown did not have enough help this year, man. Stown just did not have enough help this year, for some, for some reason, for some reason. What was also what was weird though was even though KDN's stats fell off, probably the most dramatically I'd say to go on land, even though he also is one of the best performers on the team. It's a weird position. He's tons of responsibility, all this stuff. Plus his teammates aren't helping out that much in these stress stress environments. But I will say there was like a couple of calls that he made at the major that showed that he wasn't nervous in some sense. Like he was able to make very, very tricky calls. Very creative calls and stuff like that, which I thought was promising. So, you know, and in one sense, I am calling heroic onliners. I will, outside of Stown, I will call them all onliners. I won't call Gambit onliners because they translated to top four at the major, top eight at Cologne, even though that was a, kind of a choke losing a phase. Ancient, never forget Ancient. Uh, and then top uh, two at the world final just now versus Navi, one on the first map. Didn't come close on the third map. Maybe that's a mental thing. And I'm sure a lot of the game is just mental at this point for these teams. Um, but they're they're starting to build up their experience, make strides, and look look better and better online. Uh, I'd say that Heroic just have are just farther away from that. And if Heroic aren't careful, then it will just not get easy. It'll just get worse, right? So I think that's the only consideration when it comes to Heroic versus Gambit. If I'm Gambit, I'm leaving the year pretty optimistic. If I'm heroic, I'm looking back, I'm th thinking about my stats a little bit. I'm thinking, okay, we do have a pressure problem. We didn't have Stown at the World Finals, to be fair, which was huge. But we really got to see what they look like with their pants down, if you will. Um, so, yeah, Borup was good, but damn, they, they came close to calling a great game and winning. But yeah, you know, the heroic, I think it's fair to say they're a real team. They're good. They're solid. They're welcome mission to the tier one. They look super fun to watch. They, I think they inspire the meta a lot, actually, and I think they cause other teams to play differently. Um, and I think that they prove that they're willing to play their Brave style both online and on land. They just haven't shown that it's directly translated and aren't as scary. So that's for sure. And they also, you know, Kadian does a lot of talking in these interviews, which is actually a great thing because it just makes the game more exciting to watch. We need more of that. Uh, but... You know, obviously it's sick when you, you talk the smack or you say, you set it up and then you win, you know. But uh, some of these big, bigger games, they're having trouble with that winning part. But Stan, we're here to watch him for sure. Seen some good rounds already. Um, and look, he's a T-side lurk player. He was going to go fast. He was going to go fast. They are thinking about it, but he was actually going to go inside a ramp. Now, if you show yourself at ramp, then you're trying to tell that the other team that you're gonna take, uh, you're gonna take lower, right? So, if you uh, if you lurk out a hut, 
then you might your team your opponents might think that you're coming in through mini but i've seen at this point players do all kinds of variations on their t side where they'll uh they'll lurk out hot but then they're going lower because they want to catch that vent rotator but they don't want to be sitting in squeaky so they try to find a different timing and it's all for the sake of being um as unpredictable as possible so if you're going to test the ramp a little bit then you're signaling that you're trying to take downstairs so you know, Sal might be there just to show presence, or he might have been there to walk slowly around to the back of heaven and lurk that way. One thing I've been very impressed by so far in this game is every time Stown has been really sure about an angle, a player has popped out at one point or another. He kind of knows what directly what line to hold. I feel like he's been very effective with exactly the positions he's waiting for. He looks like he's both thinking a lot, but also pretty clear about, you know, where his next threat will come. This is, which isn't something that I can analyze beyond that. That's nice. And see, little pre-fire. Yeah, we've seen some very impactful gaming so far. We've seen him uh, entry some of these rounds. He was aggressive lurking that last round. We can see him op on the CT side. Man, he might be up there. One of the most versatile players who's translated it to success. I, I think he's uh, he's kind of like a little Shoxy, actually. He's a little Danish Shoxy. A lot of people don't realize how good Shox used to be. And now he's starting, he's actually becoming great again, which is crazy because his peak was, his peak was very best, most versatile player of all time, just a few years ago. So Shoxy was truly, you know, France's best player and an unreal talent and everything. and. I think the only reason that he's still good today is because of how talented he is at this game. He's really like forest level. Um, but yeah, for those of you who missed those days back then, Shoxi had an op ace or two. He had, a, he had a memorable op ace or two. He had some amazing pistol clips, amazing rifle clips. And I think we see shades of that from Stown as well. And right now the story is, uh, you know, Funnily enough, you look at his land this year, which is the first land that Stown's ever played in. So congratulations to Heroic. And they made top eight. Very commendable result. Um, they grabbed some stickers and everything. Uh, Stown, and they beat, actually they made top four, right? Because they beat uh, Virtus Pro. Yeah, that was good. That was good, actually. That was a good game. So it's actually so weird to me because when I think of these players, I think of stats. I think about how Vertipro don't, or sorry, how Heroic don't have any bottom fraggers. That's like the first thing that comes to mind. And yet, uh, when I look at their stats, I'm like, hmm, you know, overall, not that sick compared to some of these first place results, some of their, uh, d definitely some of the teams they've taken down and the threats that they've made themselves. And, you know, they had people believing that they were the only team that could beat Navi and beat them on Nuke and all this stuff. Maybe it's the marketing. They got good. They got good marketing. Let's keep moving forward. We've already seen some really cool stuff, actually. So every round we're breaking open the squeaky door, and of course this whole duel inside of squeaky is key for the T side and for the CT side. And we'll see down this time. So now they're 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 lurking. They're actually going to go downstairs. They have one back outside. It's making this look like a standard outside take. And there's some presence. So if Stown's waiting inside of uh, the hut, that you know maybe a team pushes the hut if they've shown themselves. So that might be a calm that comes from heroic in this situation. And going into squeaky to catch the rotators, that's the easy, obvious thing to do that you kind of want to do at some point. But it's actually quite difficult to make it happen, right? You've that you've got to really catch them with their guard down. They're going to be super aware of you in this position. And you know, you think, okay. Uh, how, how nervous would he be? How nervous would he be? He's tucked behind a wall, but he has to find this perfect timing where they either walk into the vent or they fast peek him and he's jiggling a little bit. So they get the first kill on Copenhagen Flames. Stalin could at this point get flanked from behind, even though that's a little bit unlikely. And he actually even flicks just because of that natural timing that comes into your head. And he's thinking about it, but you could see how he's thinking about his time here. He's putting most of his attention forward, a couple of seconds to flick back and now working his way out. Wait, what the hell? I didn't even know someone was behind him in the spot. Ah, oh, and that's how they bait the rotation. That is beautiful stuff. They get one to drop vent. Stown goes to the side of vent. And then Hooksy shows himself. So 
Copenhagen Flames adamant about making sure that it's heroic who give noise first and then they appear. And that's when Stown actually punishes them. That's so good. You actually gotta love these little baits and stuff that uh, heroic are doing. It's sick to watch, really. It's sick to watch. I highly recommend watching uh, Heroic's Incredible Round. That was the eco strat that KDN called on this on their T side of this map in one of these games. A very a sick T side strat. I feel like he's been sporting this M9 Crimson Web for as long as I can remember. I might be crazy. Actually, you know what's nuts? That's actually that's the knife that Shoxy used to use. That's the knife, the same knife that Shoxy used to use for a long time. Oh, that's big. See, this awareness, man. I've seen him do that a few times, too, where he just takes down the secret player at different spots. Threw that Molotov down the stairs, so Roy is like, ooh, they don't think I'm here. And then they are both watching it with two people. So very, very tricky tactics here out of Heroic. Super sharp on the entry. Now Stown will to finish the last player. I don't even know. If there's any chance he needs. He doesn't need to find him. No problem. Last two rounds. Another default bomb on his back this time around. Refresh will open up. Oh, refresh will open wide. Nothing but pistols. They're gonna hear one more rotator inside of the ramp. That rotator is dead. Just mauling him like crazy right now. Remember when you're throwing your default grenades, especially positions like Squeaky, just throw the same, throw the same nade sets all over and over again. In the very beginning of the round, in situations like this, we talked about overpass, where you might want to change it up. That's a very specific one, it, it, where you're, you know, quite far away from your teammates and all this stuff. It, it takes time to get there in the first place. In, a, in in rounds like this, you just want to have the door open for all rounds. You want them to be very confused. They are the ones who have to use nades to you know, change things up versus you. But as long as you throw a smoke that lands in between the hut and squeaky, oh, it's a big round from Roy, actually. Holy. That was, that was good stuff. Can I make it out? Um, they split up to cover all the grounds. This is good. I feel like I did watch this demo from the other perspective now. I think that I watched Roy. I feel like I watched Roy coming out of secret from his perspective. But my memory's so bad. I wouldn't have done it on him, would I have? Maybe I did. Oh, is he spotted? Let's see. He'll just have to swing and hit one bullet, but he has to not die. That's the tough part. Let's go buy this. Yo, he does it. <laughs> Okay, I, I remember this. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. That's well done. Okay. Oof. Okay, that's the end. Um, the Yeah, wow. That was actually a really sick demo. Um, happy to see you down here again. And, uh, dude. I need to f Man, it's, cra it's, it's crazy to be home. I have just been sleeping very sporadically these last couple of days. So, I, I got home. I slept from... I got home and... My back is really injured. I mean, I can't even walk for like 10 minutes at a time. So this travel day was a complete nightmare for me. Um, I thought I wasn't going to make it. I really just want to cut off my leg. It's so bad. But they, uh, but uh, don't worry. I got an MRI. I'm going to go see a specialist and get ahead of this before I have to go do another travel day. But I slept from 8 to, 8 to 4 a.m. last night. And then I woke up and I was like, uh still need more i think i still need more rest and i spent the day sleeping and like sitting in my pc but like not really just not really doing things just like recovering and like i haven't i've been i've been drinking like drinking like caffeine every day for like weeks and now i just haven't so oh it's just a lot of things to get used to i feel like Ooh, everything's shaking all right great great game what have we learned that's downism Stan is a great player and he's super versatile and he's very fun to watch and he's given he's delivering interesting moves every single round. That's what we saw. That's what I definitely want to focus on.
Okay, if you wanna, yeah, okay, let's just go ahead.